A warm welcome, everyone. This live stream is designed to inspire you and give you thought for action. I'll be your moderator, prepared with lots of questions, a sharp eye on the clock and on our guests. Luckily, I'm assisted here in the studio by Johan Torstensson. Hi, Johan. Hi, Bjarta. Um, with a company history of over 800 years, Storenzo is continuously innovating um, to adapt both to new um, customer demands and market conditions, helping not just um, uh, helping not only revenue st streams stay healthy, but also the environment. And it's so amazing what you can do with a tree. Take a look. Have you ever thought about what trees will be able to do in the future? Transparent wood, programmable wood that can change shape or form depending on the needs paper that can store energy and solar panels from trees. Have you ever thought about what a tree can do? We do. All the time. Store Enso, the renewable materials company. Please help me in welcoming a person uh, who is responsible for group strategy, execution of all IT services and the strategy for group digitalization at Storenso. Timo Salmi is joining us. Hi, Timo. Good morning to both of you. How are you doing? We're so great and we're so happy that you're joining us. You know you are Yuan's favorite C C CIO and you were <laughs> awarded... <laughs> you were Good start of the day. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you were awarded CIO of the year in Finland in 2020. Can you tell us briefly how you've innovated the role of the CIO? Wow, it's a big question. Innovated the role, I don't know if I've done that. Let me start first of all by saying that I'm extremely proud and happy about uh, that announcement, of course. And it, it goes to the full team. It's not only one person. I have a great team working with me. Right? But I, I think that a couple of things that I really have focused in my role since I took over a bit more than four years ago as a CIO for, for Storanzo is to to focus on, on, on digital innovation, right? I mean, it's, it's so important that we drive that agenda. Uh, it's a company agenda. It's not, you know, it's not a technology agenda. It's a company agenda, but my, me and my organization are custodians of that. Second thing is probably focusing, you know, changing the focus from cost to value in all IT discussions, because there's, it's so easy to get trapped in the cost discussion without understanding what value you bring, right? And then, of course, last but not absolutely not least, service delivery and quality in everyday operations. I think that those would be the focus areas that I've been working on for next year. You're like the translator of opportunities, the translator of value to the rest of the organization. Well, I would say maybe an inspiration, maybe an idea partner, maybe someone who comes with the ideas. I think strongly that the business itself, they have all the ideas. I mean, they know how they want to develop their business. With, with the help of technology, we can do a little bit more. We can think in new ways. We can generate new revenue streams with different solutions that we haven't thought about before. And we have. We have launched new uh, uh, business services based on, on, on platform economy, for instance. We'll talk more about the role of the CIO uh, a bit later. Packaging and paper has been your business for hundreds of years. But very briefly, what has happened to that market in the last two years? Well, a lot, right? Uh, I mean, if I just take a bit of perspective on two years that you asked me about, and, and let's, let's look at 15 years, because that's in our history still a very short time, I would say. And, 15 years ago for our company, the paper business uh, was 70% of our revenue. And, and we anticipated this year to be less than 20% of our revenue. So paper has been in an industrial decline for years and it has accelerated actually uh, due to the pandemic as well. But of course, I mean, in those situations, you're forced to innovate. I mean, you really have to put your focus on innovation and we've done so as a company and innovate the new solutions and products to cater for the drop in business in paper. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your innovation agenda. Where do, we, where do you suggest we start? Well, I mean, I think the film itself that you started with is a great example, right? I mean, 
is not many companies who has a great opportunity that the raw material we're using are not it's not only recyclable it's renewable right it regrows year after year after year obviously you have to have a sustainable forestry in mind in order to make that happen right but for for every tree that we harvest we plant two new at least that's how we make sure that we have a sustainable forestry at hand and then we have continued to innovate you know uh, based on that and i'm not an chemist so i'm not going to go deep into this but if you look at the tree it uh, basically contains three things cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and we've been able to find ways to separate those uh, uh, components from each other and then rebuild it into new use cases and the lignin that's basically the glue that makes the tra tree stand up and, and keep together that material is a source of many good things to come like for instance you know uh, batteries, energy storage solutions, you saw the solar panels, carbon fiber-like products made out of lignin. So we're really developing solutions for, for uh, uh, you know, fossil-based replacement solutions. Yeah. And how do you encourage participation and, and also collaboration in the innovation process from all employees? Because I know that you're trying to foster a mindset where everyone's participating, basically. That's a good question. We started some five, six years ago thinking about how can we ensure that we can tap the brain of all the 24,000 people we have in the company. And we, we started with an open innovation process we call the DigiFund. So basically we set aside 10 million euro and we've done that every year since uh, five years ago, starting five years ago, where we say that anyone in the company who has a great idea of something that we, a problem that we need to solve or a business opportunity that we need to try out is welcome to apply through the fund to get some uh, uh, resources to try out, test that idea. Mm -hmm. Tell us how it works in practice. How, how do you steer the process? How do you prioritize? How do you set time aside for teams to work? Um, Tell us more. Well, first of all, it, it's an inclusive process, right? I mean, really encourage people in the company to apply and, and to be part of the process itself. But then we have a couple of criteria that we look at before selecting. It has to be involved new technology that we haven't tried before. It has to have a specific business challenge that we are addressing, either, either a new revenue opportunity or a technical problem that we need to solve, right? And, 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 and then, we, then we set aside resources from, from a small center of excellence that I have uh, uh, established, and we also steer the process. And then we find ecosystems and partners on the outside to help us actually test and validate that idea. So we push it from a you know, uh, idea to concept, to proof of concept, and to a pilot in months instead of years, as we used to do as a traditional company, like Yuan was saying in the beginning. And the people in the business, they continue collaborating uh, together and having the support from you in the in in this yeah. innovation process mm? yeah it's a very good point that you bring up the there because i mean the innovation idea is owned by the business i, I want to emphasize that that the team that i have we are there to help support uh, enable uh, drive but the the idea comes from the business and, and we they have to stay accountable for testing and proving that idea it's a business driven innovation agenda we have that is so important to keep in mind and I also hear that you're trying to raise the borders between being inside of the company and um, the, uh, all the players in the ecosystem around um, the, the, startup, um, the startup ecosystem, uh, partners, etc. Um, I think it's a great example of how to hyper-connect, to use a, a, um, a popular phrase. But what creates engagement in all of these interactions and collaborations? Well, I think... If we start with the internal, I mean, we have to make sure that people, uh, that, that they get the opportunity to live throughout their own idea. So we need to give the people the time and possibility to actually drive their idea from start to, 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 to finish, right? And be participating, owning the idea that they have, right? And then externally, I think it's it's about finding the right partners, whether it's a startup or any other company that is fit for the, to, the purpose, so to say, what we have at hand, the development of that opportunity or challenge that we have. And for us, the startup ecosystem has been extremely valuable. And we found many, many good solutions to our opportunities. And we commercialized with over 30 startups still today based coming out of our innovation pipeline. I know you're constantly scanning startups. Can you give us some advice on how to invite 
uh, or, or how to collaborate. You, I mean, you're a huge company uh, collaborating with a s very small entity who has been around for maybe a few years. W what are the success factors here for finding a fruitful collaboration? Well, I mean, first of all, it, it's to, to, to have some kind of accelerated partner in, on the journey, I would say. And, and five years ago, we, we are one of the founding members of an industry network created by the Wallenberg family called Combian. So, you know, Combian is a company that brings all the Wallenberg companies together. The, idea, the original idea was to share digital innovation agenda between the, the, the companies, right? Now we have expanded really more than that. But within Combian, we have one business stream we call the Foundry. And the Foundry actually is a startup accelerator that helps all the companies in our network to to find the appropriate uh, startup company based on the idea that we have. So that, that is how we started and, and it has been very fruitful for us. And uh, the second thing, if I may be able to add there as well, is of course that you have to be specific from, an, from a company perspective. We have to be specific on our idea. We have to be specific on our opportunity. That's something that we learned that we have to describe what we need very well before we enter the journey. Yeah. Can Tell us also about the role of your cloud strategy and how that enables um, innovation, if that's an important component. Well, I mean, I think that today it, it's impossible not to have a cloud strategy. Having said that, it's nothing that we emphasize, to be totally frank. When it comes to our infrastructure and our backend, I mean, we have a mix today of a hybrid cloud. We have a private cloud uh, uh, and, and we, we are also using uh, public clouds, right? But then the most important thing also connecting maybe the core IT agenda with the digital innovation agenda is to look at best of breed. So, so when we have process development, when we have something that we need to improve in our company, we look at the best of breed solutions on the market and then we tap them in. And usually these are source players today and, and, and you have to make sure these source players are cloud native to start with. So by that, the, that process is driving our cloud strategy itself. And, and I want to emphasize what you once said in the beginning, beginning, that the data is so important. You know, having your transactional systems in the back end, yes, you need to have that in order. But if you have the data there in order, you can tap in source solutions and, and ensure that the data flows create also value mm -hmm. for our company. And scale so much more rapidly. I'd like yeah, to exactly. finish um, by talking a bit about your latest initiative with H&M. Um, tree to textile. So it, it's so innovative. You're creating a complement to cotton. Uh, and can you talk about why that is such an, an important innovation from a sustainability perspective? Because it's so fun and, and, and so forward thinking. Sure, let me do that. <clears throat> and let me start by saying that we are four uh, uh, in the ecosystem. It's us, H&M, IKEA, and an investment group called LSCS. And, and together, of course, the market is screaming for more sustainable solutions to the textile industry and to the raw material in the textile industry. So the way that the raw material today is produced is not sustainable, consumes a lot of water, consumes a lot of land that can be used for food production, for instance, in many poorer countries, right? So we have now innovated a process where we, with the, with the um, tree fibers, actually can, can create a replacement or an alternative, a sustainable alternative to the textile raw material industry. And it, of course, starts with a tree. And then, then there's a process for how we, how we will develop that tree into textile raw material uh, for the future. Following, so your, following your innovation process, I guess. Absolutely. Working Absolutely. in the ecosystem with these partners. Uh, Such a great example. Uh, you, Juan and, and Timo, in what way do the two of you support each other? Because Storans is a client of yours. Mm -hmm. how, how do you two work together? Well, I see two things we, we bring to, to uh, uh, Storans. So one is, I mean, we have industry knowledge. You need to be able to work with a customer like, like Timo and, and Storans. You need to understand their business. If you don't do that, you're probably going to pitch the wrong thing or come with the wrong idea. So, so understanding their opportunity, their challenge. And number two is what Timo talked so much about the underlying platform to say, you know, this needs to be a stable platform in order for Timo and the team to spend time on innovation and not operational issue. And how to that platform, how they can connect those SaaS solutions with the traditional call, call it private cloud solution. So, you know, I talked about this platform. So the platform and industry knowledge, I would say. What do you see as the main value in your relationship? Well, first of all, I would say that uh, 
us and Peter Avery, we go way back when it comes to relationship. We have a long story together. And, and it, it's in kind of in many places. It's in, like you once said, it's in the infrastructure piece, it's in the application piece, and and, and so on, right? And and I think that Peter Avery is, you know, from a company perspective, very well positioned to understand what are our challenges, what are our opportunities, and to help us drive our innovation agenda, right? So we have a long standing history. Uh, which we cherish. And as CIO of the year in Finland, can you just give us a bit more advice on what capabilities do you, would you like to see more of in your team? What do you think is will be increasingly important going forward? Well, I, I think I can only talk for myself on what has been success factors for us, right? Not knowing if that is for everyone. But I, but I think that having the business-driven innovation mindset is so critical. And I've seen that examples when you're trying to scale up a huge digital organization in a technology part of the organization, that doesn't work. So our approach has been to have a small center of excellence that helps the business to drive their digital innovation agenda. So the business needs to ensure that they also start employing the right capabilities to match with the COE to drive the digital innovation agenda for the company. That has been a success for us. And then, of course, mindset and attitude. Nothing is impossible. Don't say no, say yes, right? And try it out. Try new things. Be be there and, and be ready to fail. Be ready to win. I think attitude and mindset is very important. And we try to learn a lot from the startup world how to drive innovation and business development in general. And really love the insights, the customer feedback and live with sort of the business development, I hear you say. Anything you want to comment? This is one of your favorite subjects, Johan. No, but you think, are a, yeah. a, you are a former CIO from Ericsson, I know. Yes, and, and being a CIO, I think once to make it very simple, I think the CIO should show, show their beautiful side to the business, meaning the face of TMO to the business, so that you don't turn their back. It's many sometimes when you have issues with the back end system such, the SO, CIO turns their, excuse my language, the ugly side to the business and just work with their suppliers to fix the operations. So doing what Tim is doing and make sure the underlying is working so he can show his, his beautiful face to the business, mm -hmm. so to say. Thank you so much, Timo, for joining us and um, for, for giving us so much inspiration and practical um, advice as well. Kitos. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Does today's data and application explosion stop or accelerate your success? Driven by multi-cloud, 5G, connected devices and edge computing, this richness of data opens up infinite new opportunities. But all this may also add complexity and risks that throw you off track to insight and innovation. We serve as the digital heartbeat of Nordic society. We help you to hyper-connect all your systems to a secure, stable and scalable platform that adds value for you and your customers. And by hyper-connecting data, applications and talent, you open your silos and ignite a free flow of ideas and innovation. So, while others struggle with exploding difficulties, you accelerate to success. Hyper-connected data, applications and talent. Remove obstacles, accelerate to success. The route to insights and innovation. Tieto Every, 